Welcome to the Workplace Wellbeing Essential Series. I'm Mari Ryan. I'm the CEO and founder of Advancing Wellness. It's my pleasure to welcome you today to this expert interview where we explore topics that impact employee well-being. My guest today is Sarah Johnson. Sarah, as co-president and CEO, leads the business development and strategy initiatives for pro-change behavior systems. Sarah brings to her role over 20 years of experience developing behavior change solutions in a variety of domains, including weight management, smoking cessation, medication adherence, and medical education. She has been the principal investigator on over $6 million of research in National Institute of Health grants to examine the effectiveness of trans-theoretical model-based interventions. She is currently leading new research initiatives to integrate individual and culture level interventions to enhance well being, increase engagement with evidence based mo mobile apps that promote behavior change, and to develop interventions for pain, self management, sleep, and financial well being. Mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson also serves as the co editor of the Art, in, uh, the Art of Health Promotion in the American Journal of Health Promotion. She received her PhD in clinical psychology from the University of Rhode Island and is currently an adjunct, fa adjunct faculty member to the psychology department. She has nearly 40 publications, including refereed research publications, book chapters, and published reports. To what extent can we marry that individual level behavior change that we're talking about and that that goes to the culture you know, to the, that might be um, affiliated with programs that are targeted to managers and that whole organizational cultural piece? That's a great question and something we've been thinking a lot about. So, for example, we're working with Laura Putnam on an initiative entitled Managers on the Move, in which we're activating managers as agents of change within the organization. Gallup suggests that managers account for as much as 70% of the variance in employee engagement. Mm. So if we can help managers recognize their role as a gatekeeper or their potential role as a multiplier of well-being, we can in fact activate them as agents of change within the organization. And Laura, for example, has this one-day workshop where she really walks managers through the potential role they could have in the organization is, is promoting the well-being of their team members, even if the culture isn't supportive overall organizationally. And we've been systematically evaluating that workshop and have demonstrated some really nice impacts on the productivity, engagement, and well-being of both managers and their participating team members who aren't even in the room. So they're really activating those managers really does have a downstream impact on their team members. And the other initiative that we're doing that I think is really relevant to your question is we're beginning to evaluate the extent to which um, employers can create that supportive culture well-being and are developing um, an employee facing audit of the extent to which employers are creating an, uh, a culture that's supportive and that really promotes engagement and well-being and for now at least we're offering on a pilot basis to organizations who are interested in getting some feedback mm -hmm. about steps they could take to improve the culture within their organization and in exchange for their participation in the assessment which will help us refine it further we're giving them those recommendations and we're marrying that feedback to their scores on the hero scorecard Wonderful. about the extent to which they're using best practices within their organization to design their health and well-being programs. So um, I think it'll be an interesting initiative. And um, maybe in a year or so, we'll come back to you and give you the results. <laughs> well, I'd love to hear about that. And, you know, I really think it's, you know, so I'm delighted to hear that you're doing this type of work and certainly partnering with Laura. She's been one of our guests uh, oh, on this great. series previously. And it's so interesting to, to really think about behavior change and the impact that the organization, what goes on around you, the norms, the culture, exactly. and how that influences everything that we do and how it can either support it or diminish our mm -hmm. well-being. Absolutely. And I think there's no question. I mean, regardless of the angle at which you look at this problem, I mean, if you look at Michael O'Donnell's uh, awareness, motivation, skills, and opportunity model, or you look at the hero data from the scorecard about the extent to which organizations who are creating this, using best practices to create a supportive culture, uh, or the data that Wellcoa has on their seven benchmarks, I think there's a real consensus now that we can't offer these things in isolation, that they really need to work together. Right. 
Right. So much so. Agree. Totally. <laughs> total agreement there. I'm curious to what extent do we need to intervene on topics that aren't traditionally seen as wellness programs? And what might be areas for these interventions? Gosh, I think there is a huge impetus right now to expand our definition of what traditionally has been um, considered in the purview of wellness programs. Uh, I think we really need to be thinking holistically about well-being. And I think employers have made a lot of strides in this direction. Increasingly, you're hearing about employers addressing financial well-being and sleep, which is fantastic. But there are still so many things that employers are not yet addressing that are critical topics for overall well-being. So for example, we are about to um, send to press a special issue of the Heart, Art of Health promotion on social connection. Mm -hmm. And increasingly, the data are clear that social connection is a critical component of well-being. And um, I mean, if you think about it with regard to the potential impact that social disconnection has on the increased risk of chronic disease and even premature mortality, I mean, people are now saying that it's on par with smoking 15 cigarettes a day or being obese with regard to the increased premature mortality risk. So um, there's no question that that is a critical topic for us to be addressing and that employers can play a key role by taking really simple steps, even with something as simple as onboarding, to help employees create meaningful social connections with one another and create that sort of supportive environment. Well, that whole sense of belonging is so core. Yes. You know, and we hear about, you know, this loneliness epidemic and, mm -hmm. people, you know, not feeling like they belong in an organization. You know, there's a lot of different types of approaches that employers can really take around some of those things. So Absolutely. I totally agree. And I'm really glad to hear that the science is there and that, you know, the thinking is becoming much broader because certainly connection is one of the core elements of the framework we use, you know, along with community purpose, mm -hmm. you, know, Absolutely. Our, you know, the energy, our physical well-being, and the financial piece that I know you're also doing some work mm -hmm. in. Yeah, we couldn't agree more. And I think social connection plays a role in other issues that are huge issues now for employers. So, for example, the mental health crisis, the mm -hmm. opiate crisis, um, even caregiver burden. I think... Um, We've been seeing a lot in Employee Benefit News and the New York Times about the expense associated with caregiver burden because of, for example, lost productivity in the workplace, in addition to the reduced well-being of the caregiver. And social isolation is a huge component, I think, of the burden that a caregiver faces. Mm. So I think it's going to end up being sort of a critical component of a lot of the other really pressing topics that we need to address as a field. Totally agree. That's great. So you're doing some fabulous research. If our audience wants to learn a little bit more about the work you're doing or how to find out about the instrument that you, uh, that assessment that you mentioned, where can they find about, find out more information? Well, they can always go to our website, um, prochange.com or email me at sjohnson at prochange.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Such fabulous topics, such great work that you're doing, and so important for the way that programs are designed and implemented in uh, worksite settings. So thanks for being here today, Sarah. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thanks so much, Mari.